Well, hello again from Kingston. It's New Year's Eve here, and I thought that would be an appropriate time to have a look at just how far we've come in 2021. Well done every single worker on the bridge, and I wish all of you and your families and friends a very safe and a very happy new year. See you in 2022. The project began 2021 in a very wintry setting. Only a handful of piers had been completed, while others were in the process of construction. It was a sure sign of things to come when the mighty LR1300 cranes arrived on site. On the east shore, the massive BG39 drill rig continued work on piles and piers. There was little sign of the massive development that was to come on the east side, and the dry stone wall was still in place by the library. The pace began to quicken when the first concrete girder arrived at the very beginning of February. 48 metres long and nearly 80 tonnes, it dwarfed the men beside it. Joined by a second girder the same day, both would be in place on span two by the 4th of February. Over 26 weeks, the skilled drivers from DCAST would negotiate that difficult turn from Sir John A to John Counter, delivering all 95 concrete girders. Delivery and installation would have to cope with all sorts of weather conditions. By the end of February, 10 of the 95 girders would already be in place. Beside Gore Road Library, the section of the dry stone wall, which would be relocated in the final stages of the project, was removed, bagged and tagged. Nearby, careful examination would reveal that the first sections of the steel structure of the bridge had arrived. By mid-March, the first two of these would be in place, with one end resting on Pier 19, and the other on a temporary crossbeam. Over 14 weeks, a steady stream of deliveries ensured that progress on the steel structure of the bridge maintained momentum. two of the 48 major steel sections of the bridge arrived in late June and were installed shortly after. A brief topping out ceremony included placement of the traditional tree on the final beam and the display of banners representing all the companies involved. Somewhat earlier, the now familiar decast trucks and their drivers had delivered the concrete topping slabs, which would be the base layer for both the concrete and the steel sections of the bridge. And ducts and pipes were being installed on the south side. With a surface from which to work, side extensions and brackets to support them could be added. Once reinforcing rod had been laid by an amazing team of iron workers, it was time for the concrete laying Gomaco machine to take its place. It wouldn't be long before it made its first run. With impressive results. By year's end, concrete had been laid on nine of the concrete girder spans and a start had been made on the steel. A 
look beneath the steel arches today would reveal the fact that iron workers and a dedicated team of divers had removed all the cross beams and temporary piles in July. Her sisters remained to lift the last 10 concrete girders. Berta, the first of the LR1300s to depart, would leave in early August. Bridget would depart just over a month later. And then finally, it was Gertie's turn to go. But it's time to explain how we got from this to this. Tomlinson, the contractor responsible for Gore Road and the intersection with 15, had staff on site for some time. But in May, at a planning meeting, things began to get real. Heavy machinery began to arrive and two teams dedicated to roadway and infrastructure began work in June. All of this benefited from work undertaken by Hydro in April to relay power lines and expand the intersection with Highway 15. With Tomlinson heavily engaged, it was time for Digitech to remove cables controlling old signals and Black and MacDonald to arrive to relay new ones of a temporary nature. With a new control box installed, they could then remove the old light poles. Work continued for several months, basically widening the old Gore Road. Part and parcel of the work was installing utilities that would lie under the new roadway. This included breaching Highway 15 on several occasions only to relay it. Gravel removed from beneath the piers on the temporary causeway frequently found its way to Lower Gore Road. And huge quantities were used to create the base of the new roadway. Before long it was time to grade then to lay curbs, concrete sidewalks and medians. With everything looking pretty good on Gore Road, it was time for a first visit by Williams Paving. Over four days, working some late hours, they did a pretty good job. Following some preparatory work on the surface of Highway 15, Williams returned again in December to complete paving there. With appropriate road markings applied, the intersection looked pretty good at year's end. Well, that's it. I'm going to wish you all a very happy new year and leave you with some of the more mellow moments of 2021.